Evening, everyone. It's a few minutes before six on Tuesday evening, the 11th, and this is your closing comment for the day. It's video number 1101. Okay, so uh, Powell said absolutely nothing of any consequence today. I don't understand why some of these senators uh, don't just say to him, you know, you told us there was no inflation. Now you're telling us there's inflation and it's a problem. The Fed needs to be trusted how are we supposed to trust you? But of course, they all have their own agendas and they don't ever ask a hard pre a hard question. Even Elizabeth Warren, who clearly doesn't like the guy, threw up a bunch of softball questions at him. So uh, the market, in fact, uh, had opened a little soft after being uh, higher than lower in the futures. Uh, it sold off for a while. Uh, but it gained its footing when the 10-year uh, uh, started to dip back down to unchanged on the day and slightly lower uh, as interest rates, and the markets finished strong. Dow up 183 or a half a percent, NASDAQ up 210 and change, up 1.41 percent. The thing that uh, appealed to me today were the market internals. And don't get me wrong, I still think this is going to be a fairly uh, crappy first quarter, but advanced declines on the NYSE were 3 to 1. Volume was 4 to 1 to the upside. On the NASDAQ, advanced declines were 2 to 1. Volume there was three to one. So we had strong internals. The only thing I would find any fault for uh, was the uh, total volume at 4.3 billion was almost a 25% decline from yesterday's 5.3 billion. So a little bit of weakness there. Uh, the S&P up 42.78 or 0.92%. Um, the small caps at the Russell up 22.85, a little over 1%. So um, that makes the NASDAQ the biggest gainer, followed by the Russell. The only one that was down on the day were the Dow Jones um, transportations down 2772.17. Uh, the VIX was down a little, 1841, down 99 or 5%. So there's still a fair amount of complacency here. That's not as bad as, you know, the 14, 15, 16 level, but uh, we're also not above 20, so I look at it that way. Uh, IBM had a downgrade. It was down $3 this morning pre-market. It finished down only 216, so a little bit of an improvement from down over 2.5% to down only 1.6%. Shake Shack had a big beat, top and bottom line, and same store sales. 77.49, up $9.23, 13.5%. Abercrombie and Fitch also had a uh, substantial beat, even though they said that uh, they didn't have a lot of inventory. So that kind of uh, was a bit of a hindrance. This morning it was up 180. It finished up 255 at 34.90. That's 7.8%. And um, Tellurian, one of our little favorites, I'm just going to mention it now. Uh, because of the action in the energy markets, um, net gas was particularly strong, and that's what Tellurian is involved with. The stock traded 295 yesterday, traded 340 today, closed 330, up 19 cents or 6.1 percent. And uh, one of the big losers on the day was Biogen. The stock closed 241.52, up 621, or 2.6%, uh, which was pretty nice. But then after the close, the FDA came out and said that they're going to, uh, Medicare said that they are going to limit 
the use of this very expensive Alzheimer's drug to clinical trials and people who are very specifically early onset. So the stock, as I said, closed 241, traded all the way down to 218 and a half. The last on that one is 224 down 1131 or 4.8%. So instead of being up almost 3%, it was down almost 5%. Okay, the chart on the screen, as I mentioned, that gas, which gapped up yesterday and closed mid-range, a little bit of a disappointment. Today, opened down and went down slightly higher high yesterday uh, low yesterday's low was 397 today's low was four dollars four dollars and 007 uh, but it came roaring back towards the end of the day and closed almost on the exact high and uh, I'm thinking that uh, this 450 area uh, looks easily attainable. It's only 25 cents from where we are now. And uh, our position in the UNG calls, uh, we sold half of them yesterday on the 100% up rule. And uh, today, and that was at 98 cents, today they closed at $1.22. Uh, so that was up another 20 odd percent so a very healthy trade there uh, the oil was uh, 81.22 on the day up 2.99 uh, and that was a pretty extensive move also it tried the downside early and as Eddie Hart used to say when they couldn't take it down they took it back up and as you can see it blasted right through all of this resistance in here that we've been seeing the last couple of days uh, closing pretty close to the high i'm going to say the next area of real problem is 83.30 so that's almost two dollars away uh, gold also had a pretty decent day today closing up uh, 19 and a half dollars another one that has tried the downside failed to make any real progress came right back into support if you recall i was calling for uh 1780 the low that day was 1781 and then yesterday was an update and today was another update we really need to clear this area up here uh in in order to get going and the higher closes are uh, this one from uh, late last week at 1825, and of course this one at 1828. So a close over 1830, Dennis tells me, probably yields about 1850, and uh, seems pretty clear on the chart. Uh, Bitcoin was up 1060, closed pretty close to the high. Uh, the dollar was down 36 cents, uh, and bonds were up about five eighths of a point. Um, and I'm going to start following copper. There was a great story this morning that uh, the link to which is on tonight's daily note. Um, but it was a story by the head of commodities at Goldman Sachs, who is uh, calling for a pretty strong bull market move in all commodities. He says a commodity super cycle. But he thinks, seems to think that copper will be the new oil. Um, doesn't surprise me. He talks a lot about um, the move to decarbonize um, the economy, the world economy. And the only way to do that is to have copper to uh, be able to uh, deliver that electricity. So, um, you know, we are getting into an area of resistance that has turned this back since October, since it came back down through it in this four and a half area. Uh, you know, we look like we want to go higher, but the MACD looks like it may roll to the downside. The five day moving average is this purple. It's moving to the downside. If it doesn't turn up sharply here and close above four. 
over 50, um, I'm going to wait to put on a position. But uh, some of these copper stocks like um, Rio Tinto and BHP, um, and Rio Tinto is RIO, uh, pay massive dividends. And I think that those dividends are safe if copper continues to move higher. Um, and when I say they pay substantial dividends, we're talking about 9% plus. So um, either of those two stocks look like they will go into our stocks for total return portfolio in the very short term. All right, everyone. Have a good evening. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, Beige Book. We have CPI and Core CPI, and we have the Treasury Budget. Then on Thursday we have the PPI. So it's going to be a busy week, and then earnings starts. Have a good evening. Be careful out there. I'll be back.